All right, this tutorial is going to give you an idea of two-step inequalities. And we're going to make sure that we talk about the type of inequality sign, how we're going to graph them, what it's going to look like, and also what the solution set is going to look like. Let's get started by using our graph paper in our boxes. And we're going to make sure that we trace each term that we have. For two-step inequalities, we're going to have two terms on one side and one term on the other. So as you can see, I've traced two boxes on the left and one box on the right, and I've put our inequality sign right in the middle. And that's going to allow me to write down my terms. I've got 5n, I've got a negative 4, and on the right side I've got a positive 6. Now we're going to solve these just like we solved two-step equations. Our job is to isolate our variable. How do we isolate the variable? Well, we have to find an additive inverse for the number that's on the side of our variable. And we're going to make sure that whatever number we find to zero this side out, we're going to place it on the opposite side as well. Because remember, inequalities and equations, they're like you and your brother or sister. We've got to make sure that we have the same thing on both sides and that both are equal and the same. So if you get four dollars, we've got to give the same thing to your brother or sister. It's just fair. Positive four and negative four are additive inverses, and it leaves us with just those five n's on the left side of our inequality. I'm going to bring down my greater than sign, and when I put six and four together, I'm going to get ten. And now it just comes down to understanding that we have to break our ends apart. I have five of them. And those five ends are still going to be greater than my 10, which I'm going to break my 10 into five equal sections as well. And that would give me the number two for each. So we realize right now that n is going to be greater than two. What does our solution set look like for that? Well, our solution set is going to start with n. It could be, what is a number that is greater than 2? Are we including 2 in the solution set? Well, it just says that n is greater than 2. So that means we need to start with the number 3, and we could have 4, 5, and so on into that infinite direction. So how do we graph that up above? Well, on our number line, we are going to start at the number 2, and we are going to use an open circle. We do not use close because we're not including 2. 2 is not part of our solution set. But we're going to start at 2, and we're going to say that any number that is larger than 2 is part of our answer. And so our first one is finished. Here's a second one that came up in conversation. Again, we have two terms on the left-hand side. We, this time we have a less than or equal to sign. So that's going to change our circle here in a minute. And then I have one term on the right side. So I'm going to trace my boxes first, my term boxes, and then place x being divided by 2. I'm going to put my negative 3. And on the right side, I'm going to put my 4. And this is where we've said in the past, let's save the pawn. Our pawn or our x is getting cut or they're asking us to cut it into two separate pieces, and we don't want that to happen to them. So the way to counteract the division of two is to make sure that we multiply by that same number that they're dividing by. And we have to multiply every term by that number. So we're going to multiply every term by two, and that will save our pawn, save our x. And it'll leave it as just the single x that it is. Now what happens to every other term? Well, negative 3 is going to get doubled, or multiplied by 2, so it's going to become negative 6. Positive 4 is going to get doubled, multiplied by 2, which is going to give us positive 8. And now our job, once again, just like the last one, is to isolate our variable. What number or card could we put and match up or pair up with negative 6 in order so that this becomes 0, well, that's going to be positive 6. 
Those are additive inverses. I have to do the same. Whatever I put on one side, I've got to do the other. And so that leaves us with our x being less than or equal to 14. How does our solution set look like? Well, my x, it says right here that x has to be less than or equal to 14, which means we get to start with 14. We are including it as part of our answer. But numbers that are less than 14 then would be 13, 12, and we would continue in that direction for an infinite amount. What does this look like if we graphed it on a number line? Well, if I graphed quickly and draw a quick number line, I'm going to put 14 in the middle. Two numbers that are bigger, 15 and 16. Two numbers less would be 13 and 12. We want to use a filled in circle because 14 is part of our solution set. And then showing that numbers are less would be to the left, 13, 12, and so on and so forth. So there's two good examples. All right, here's our last bonus example for you. This is one that hasn't come up as much, but I wanted to make sure to cover in this tutorial video for you. Again, I have one term on the left-hand side, and I've got two on the right. And so I'm going to place my terms into my term boxes. And what you need to notice is this right here. We have a negative variable. It hasn't come up that much, especially with inequalities. We do not want a negative variable. So the first thing that we're going to take care of is making sure that we create a positive variable. How do we do that? We do it the same way we do anything, is we use inverses. I'm going to place three positive x's on both sides. And actually, I should probably show it next to it with my x's because it's going to become part of my inequality. This will zero out. And now I am left with a positive 3x and a positive 8 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, the only thing that's left is a negative 1. We'll isolate our variable just like we did with the other two inequalities. What can we pair with positive 8 that will zero it out? Well, that's going to be a negative 8. What we do to one side, we do to the other. So we are left with 3x is less than. When we put our negatives together, we get negative 9. If I split up my 3x's into individual x's, I need to do the same to negative 9. I need to split it into three equal sections, which means each x is going to be less than negative 3. Solution set-wise, x, it's not going to start with negative 3 because it's not equal to, but we want numbers that are going to be less than negative 3. This one can be tricky. What's a number that's less than negative 3? Well, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6, that's counting in that negative direction. If we graph it, you'll be able to see it a little bit better that Numbers that are less than 3, negative 4, negative 5. Numbers that are greater than 3 is negative 2, negative 1, and it's going toward that 0. We're going to use an open circle because we're not including negative 3 as part of our solution set, and our arrow is going to point to the left.